The U.S. is readying for a possible missile strike on Syria, and reports say preparations are already underway. The Pentagon is moving its naval forces closer, ensuring President Obama has military options available. He's mulling action following an alleged chemical attack, which has been blamed on Syria's government. Three destroyers are currently deployed in the Mediterranean, and according to reports, a fourth is on its way. All of them are carrying up to 300 cruise missiles, which is more than enough to act rapidly if Obama wants to order a strike. And there is also the NATO maritime group in the region, which is for more ships. And uh, if we take a look at the mainland, the U.S. and its Western allies' military presence around Syria is also quite significant. And uh, let's now get more from our she's Marina Portnay. She's joining us now live. Um, Marina, so military opposition are seriously on the table for Washington right now. Uh, please tell us more. Well, it appears that the U.S. is no longer just using words to address the ongoing Syrian crisis. Plans of possible military action, as you explained, are now being uh, deliberated. President Barack Obama is meeting with his national security advisors uh, Saturday to discuss recent allegations of chemical weapons being used by the Syrian government forces in a, in Dam in a Damascus suburb earlier this week. Now, despite the fact that the unconfirmed reports made by the Syrian rebels have not been verified, President Obama has called it a big event of grave concern. Now, a White House official says that the U.S. has a range of options and that the Obama administration is going to act very deliberately in making decisions consistent with U.S. national security interests and how Washington can advance its objectives in Syria. Meantime, on Friday, the U.S. Navy had uh, repositioned a uh, ship armed with cruise missiles in the Mediterranean. U.S. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel said Obama has already asked the Pentagon for options on Syria. Now, Joint Chiefs Chairman General Martin Dempsey is reportedly expected to present options for a strike during, Saturday, uh, during Saturday's meeting at the White House. According to CBS News, uh, potential targets include command bunkers and launchers used to fire chemical weapons. Now, up until this point, the U.S. leader has been very cautious over intervening in Syria, previously saying, quote, the U.S. should be wary of being drawn into very expensive, difficult, costly interventions that actually breed more resentment in the region, unquote. However, one year ago, Obama also said that chemical weapons used in Syria would be a red line for the United States, and now he is under pressure, growing pressure, to act. U.S. officials have acknowledged that there is no conclusive evidence linking Syrian President Bashar al-Assad to this week's alleged chemical attacks. Nonetheless, a State Department spokesperson has also said that Washington doesn't believe the rebels are capable of carrying out chemical attacks. So logically, this would lead one to think that the White House has already found the Syrian government guilty of the alleged chemical uh, weapons uh, being used uh, in, in Syria. Now, the media has also played a significant role in recent days, with many Western media outlets looping very sad and shocking video of dead victims in Syria while reporting that the assumption is that the Syrian government is behind the mass killing. So lots of developments taking place right now, uh, standing by to see uh, what decision the U.S. is going to make and if they make a decision, when they will execute it. All right, Artis Marina Portnay, live from New York. Marina, thank you very much. New reports from Syria say the army has discovered chemicals in an area earlier controlled by opposition forces. And despite no confirmation of reports that the government carried out a chemical attack, international pressure on Assad is increasing. The French foreign minister insists all indications suggest the government was behind the massacre and wants to respond with force if the allegations are proven. The UK Foreign Secretary William Haig also said it was a chemical attack by the Assad regime and hears a similar voice from Syria. Sweden. Its foreign minister claimed he had a hard time coming to any conclusion other than that deadly chemicals were used by the regime's forces, while Turkey joined in, calling for necessary response to what it slammed as the crime against humanity. This says Obama called America an indispensable nation in stabilizing the Middle East. Yet there has been no international reaction so far on the chemical findings of the Syrian army. Oti's Middle East correspondent Paulus Lear has more now for us. 
Syrian state television is reporting that Syrian soldiers found traces of chemical agents after entering tunnels used by rebel fighters in a Damascus suburb. The empty shells that they found had markings on them that said that they had been made in Saudi Arabia. Just a reminder that Saudi Arabia is vehemently opposed to the Syrian president Bashar Assad. Now the soldiers started suffocating and ambulances had to be sent to the scene to assist them. Syrian television is also reporting that the soldiers found antidotes that are used to heal the intoxication. This comes after reports of a new attack earlier this week that saw the involvement of chemical weaponry. We have heard reports that anywhere between dozens and 1,300 people were killed in that new attack. There has been lots of unverified footage making the rounds online. We've seen photos of people foaming at the mouth, people suffocating, all of it pointing to the possible use of sarin gas. Some of the photos online do show empty shells. It does seem to point to the fact that this latest attack had the weaponry fired from rebel held areas. All of this comes as UN inspectors are inside Syria. They arrived last Sunday. They're carrying out investigations on some 13 other reports of chemical weapon usage. Today, the UN chief of disarmament arrived in the country and the UN team has now been tasked with trying to reach the scene of this latest chemical attack. And Damascus has indicated that they're giving them full support and they will be helping them in whatever way they can. But there is heavy fighting on the go in that area. And let's now get more analysis on the escalating tensions in and around Syria from investigative journalist Michael Collin. Uh, Mr. Collin, thank you very much indeed for joining us here at RT. Uh, so again, these recent revelations by the Syrian army indicate again that the rebels may be using chemical weapons. Will these allegations be investigated as well, what do you think? Well, I don't think there will be a serious investigation from the Western side because actually they don't look for the truth, they just look for a pretext to overthrow Assad and to take control of Syria. And this is really a strategic goal. After Syria, they will try to get control of Palestinians, Lebanon, Iran, and all this actually is part of their general strategy to take control of Russia against uh, of Asia against Russia and China. So they don't want an investigation. They don't want the truth. They just want a pretext. All right. So and this actually what you just said answers many questions. But still, why are the media and international governments largely putting uh, the blame on Assad? And we've heard from uh, from France, from the UK, from Sweden, Turkey, who have no doubt it's the government behind the at uh, attack. They're sold. What's their evidence? Well, they have no evidence and they know it. Actually, they just want to pretext. And uh, as I said uh, before many times, in every war, you've got what I'm calling the five principles of uh, propaganda war. This is to say, if you are the West and you want to take control of a country for, rich, uh, for resources or for strategic position, you have first to hide the interest, the economic interest. You have second to hide the history and what colonialism did in this region to divide the people. Third, you have to demonize the country you are going to attack, and this is it. We have a campaign since two years to demonize the government in Syria. Third, you have to pretend that you are actually making an intervention to help the victim. So uh, it is largely known that the rebels are coming atrocities, but they are always presented as the victim. And this is the fourth principle of propaganda war. And the fifth is the, to monopolize, to prevent that there is a debate and that the people think, OK, you have conflicts, you have two interests, two versions. Mm. So I have to hear the two versions. And those are the, the classical principles of propaganda war right. used in every conflict. Mm. But what we're seeing now, do you think this military build-up, this military escalation in the region uh, is a sign of, of possible near, uh, nearing intervention? Everything is always possible for them, but it's also obvious that they see the danger. They see that they have no majority in Syria and the area. In the area. The resistance is really very strong, so I believe it is more a pressure 
to negotiate because they know also they are not so strong anymore. Yeah, also President Obama said there's not enough facts to prove Assad carried out the attack. Why prepare for a military response then? Well, you have to consider the uh, weakening position of the United States in all uh, the region. They have to do something, but they don't know what to do. Uh, look, their allies in Egypt are very are getting weak. In Tunisia, the same. There are many criticism in Turkey for the role they have played against Syria. The role of Qatar is very obvious that it is really a factory of media lies with Al Jazeera. And this is also object of a lot of criticism. There has been a change at the head of Qatar. So I think they have to do something uh, to try to change the balance of the forces. But they don't really know what they are going to do. All right. Investigative journalist Michelle Collant, thank you very much indeed for your time, sir. Thank Welcome. you.